afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Wiesner Gallery online tour. My name is Shannon Rose McAuliffe, and I'm the manager of the student arts programs here at MIT. I'm joined by Sarah Herzl. She's the coordinator of the Wiesner Student Art Gallery, and Alahe Ahmadi, who is an interdisciplinary artist from Tehran, Iran. Oh. Alahe is a 2020 graduate of MIT in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and she's currently a graduate student in that very same program. She learned photography as an undergraduate student in the Department of Arts, Culture, and Technology. Alahi's project has been sponsored by the Council for the Arts at MIT, also known as CAMIT. And after a brief introduction by Sarah Herzl about the exhibition, Alahi will lead us through the virtual show via her screen share. You're welcome to view the, the exhibition on her website, which is gonna be put into the chat on your sidebar. After this tour, please feel free to join us for some question and answers. Feel free to submit your questions using the chat box, use the raise hand function, and we'll open the floor for some really lovely discussion. And without further ado, um, before we begin, my friend Sarah has a couple of words. Thank you so much, Shannon Rose, for all everything. It has been a sincere pleasure working with Alahe on this exhibition. I want to extend my particular thanks to Heidi Erickson, our graphic designer and web creator for MIT's Office of the Arts. We are grateful for the generous support of many members of the staff of the Office of the Arts and Kamen. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge how Elahe beautifully demonstrates the importance of the arts at MIT. Her subjects are very representative of the creativity and depth of our community. Alaihe is not just a photographer. She is something of a documentarian and a social artist for whom interpersonal connection has high creative value. She invites her participants and her audience to bring their full selves into the communities they study, live, and play in. Nurturing the success of women and others in settings such as MIT is important work and it's exciting that Alahe can use the art of photography to tell stories that allow for openness and connection. She uses her own challenges to nurture others. And as many of her collaborators will attest, she is a joy to work with. I am very pleased to introduce Alahe Amadi. Thank you, Sarah and Shannon for the amazing introduction and organizing this event. I'm so happy this is finally happening. Uh, I'm so excited that all of you could join us for the opening of this exhibition. This project has been a huge part of my life for the past three years, and I'm so excited to finally share the results with all of you. Um, I have put together a video about the journey of Trapped, and I don't want to spoil the rest, so let's just watch it. I hope you all enjoy it. Welcome to Trapped Exhibition, virtually hosted by Wiesner Gallery at MIT. My name is Alahe and I am the director of Trapped. This project started in fall 2018 as a final project from my intro to photography class taught by Laura Belladi. At that time, I was dealing with a lot of challenges in my personal life that led me to a very dark place, but I found photography and dark room to be my saviors. In the class, Trout started with me expressing how I was feeling at the moment, trapped by all the society's expectations all the laws that kept me from seeing my family, the pressure of being a female in engineering and having to suppress my femininity and being trapped in a relationship that getting out of it meant being a failure. So I asked a friend or two to be my model and help me capture my feelings. I showed the first couple of photos to Laura and she told me, this doesn't have to be just about you. It can be about all women. I'll give you another week and go see where this goes. I am so grateful she said that because if it wasn't for her, I would have had the courage to ask people to take time out of their lives to just model for me. But 
I gave it a shot. I started opening up to my friends, telling them how I was feeling and little did I know that I wasn't alone. From my friends back home, to my close friends and peers at MIT, to people I just met at a bar or a party, we all felt trapped one way or another. And it was then that I realized I need to let people know how we women are feeling. I need to take a step into creating a safe space for everyone to be able to share their experiences and for others to ask questions about it. I believe that talking about the issues and letting others know is a good step toward creating a society that treats everyone equally. So I did. I made Trapped to be the voice of all women from all backgrounds. The process would usually start with a conversation in some setting, and someone would either show interest in the project, or I would think of an idea or two for the person, and I would propose them to collaborate with me. Before each photo shoot, I would tell my, my participant to wear whatever they want, it just has to be all black. And then after what I would call a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about our challenges, the photo shoot would happen. Each photo shoot was unique. Sometimes I would find a place on campus or I would go to their houses or we would just go th to streets and sometimes it just happened at the moment. And suddenly I had the perfect shot. But the photo shoot wasn't just about that. It was about the whole experience. Me letting myself to be vulnerable around my female and non-binary peers, them appreciating my honesty, and also opening up about their experience, and us connecting on a deeper level. And then we would throw ideas off of each other until we were happy with a shot. Once the photo shoot was over, it was time for post-processing the images. I used both digital and 35mm film to shoot the photos. I would spend hours in the darkroom developing and printing the photos or in the digital lab doing some minor edits and printing the photos. One of the most rewarding parts of the process was bringing the moments I had with the participants to life through the photos. This project not only helped me to get through the hard times, but it also helped many of the participants to start being more vocal and expressive with the challenges they're dealing with on a daily basis. One of my participants posted the photos on her Instagram and she came out to her family and friends about her open marriage and sexuality, which <laughs> it made me so happy and proud to get to be a part of that. The project grew, not because I was pushing it, but because our voices through the photos were so powerful that it made people feel safe to open up and talk about it. All of it. The, how our communities we grew up in suffered from gender biases how gender bias affected our life choices, how we felt shut down in meetings and projects, how we felt judged by the way we dress or by our body. After 16 unique photo shoots with different women, I decided in February, 2020, that I was ready to wrap up the project. So, I called in all the people who participated before, all the people who were who showed interest at any time for a final group photo shoot. I gave them the same instruction, told them all of them that you need to wear something black, whatever you're comfortable with, put on as much makeup as you want or don't, do your hair or don't, just show up with something that you're comfortable with, something that is you. 
So I told everybody to show up at 10 a.m. Saturday. This was different from all the photo shoots that I did before because it wasn't a one-on-one, -on -one, something that I was like comfortable with and it was like a comfortable, intimate setup. It was a group setting that everybody from different backgrounds, I asked all of them to get together. So before that, all of the photo shoots, I didn't plan them much beforehand because I knew once we get into it, we will throw ideas off of each other and the photo shoot would just happen. But this one was different. So what I did was I took all of the prints that I had, my camera, all the setup, just showed up where I was supposed to show up. And you should have been there. It was amazing. Just seeing all these awesome, beautiful, smart, strong women get together in this set like day. And most of them didn't even know like other people, like maybe like every person knew like one or two other person, but for a lot of them, it was like a kind of an uncomfortable setup too, because like nobody did modeling professionally. It was something like new for all of them, but we all shared one thing and it was, we believed in Trapped. We believed that Trapped is something that can help all of us voice our feelings, our struggles. And that was what brought everybody together on that day. And it was amazing. So at the beginning of the session, I put all the prints down and I told everybody, take whatever print that you feel close to and write something on the back of it or draw something or do whatever you feel comfortable. Something like if that photo spoke to you and that's why you picked it, then you have something to say. And that was for me to just like get everybody in that headspace and also have some time to like put prepare the setup and and the results were just fabulous to see how other people like felt something with somebody else who maybe was from another world like was born somewhere else had a completely different background but there was still one connection there in my opinion, that was the best way to warm up everybody. Uh, let everybody to be more comfortable, loosen up, and get to that headspace. And we started shooting. We started taking the group photos. Um, you can see them now in the exhibition. There are... I love them. I mean, I'm biased, but I think they look amazing. Just seeing everybody's beautiful faces, the different outfits, the different way that they put themselves in the frame. I, I didn't tell them what to do. All I told them was exist, do whatever it feels comfortable for you. If that means talking with somebody else that you know, do that. I don't care. I want you to be in the headspace you are now and express yourself somehow with your body. And. I couldn't believe it when I looked at my watch and it was 4 p.m. and I was shooting six hours non-stop. It was, I think for me, that was like one of the best days I've ever had doing anything. Like six hours, not even realizing how time passed. And I was happy, I was just jumping everywhere and like looking at the photos, loving everything that was happening there. and. It was amazing to see I wasn't the only one enjoying myself. Other people were also like really enjoying talking to other people, getting each other's contact info, um, just connecting and kind of networking too. And I think it was the best way to wrap up this photo, this project, because that was what I wanted. I wanted to bring people 
together. I wanted to create a safe space. And I wanted people to see other women, realize they're not alone, and be proud of the struggles and how far they came. And even though most of the times, everything is against us. Hi, I'm Alexa. I'm from San Francisco and I graduated MIT last year in Core 62. I'm currently a program manager in camera and depth hardware in the Bay Area. I had the honor and privilege of doing a photo shoot for Trapped with Elahe. Uh, the photo shoot was such an awesome experience. It was a glimpse into the crazy creative mind that is Elahe. We were just bouncing ideas off of each other, like what if you blur this with motion? What if you put this pattern on your face? What if you turned around? It was all these what ifs flying around. And I think part of the reason it was so easy and fun is because she's my really good friend and it was a really comfortable space for experimentation. And I think the other part of it is because she's such a great photographer and she turns the world into her art so effortlessly. I think Trapped as a whole is a set of feelings and emotions to me. It's isolation, despair, and hopelessness. It's this feeling of being where you don't want to be and not knowing how to get out. I think that's somewhere that we've all been to a certain extent. I think that's also the reason why this project expanded to what it is now. It's because the theme is so universal, yet also so personal to each individual. Thanks, Elahe, for letting me be a part of this, and I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I do. Hi, my name is Ellie. I was born in Iran and raised in the US. I currently live in Los Angeles, California, and I graduated from Boston University in 2020. I was a part of the trap photo shoot and I'm extremely grateful that I was a part of the trap photo shoot because it just means so many different things to me. As a young girl growing up in Iran and the US and hearing from all different types of people how women should feel and how they should look and how they should act and how they should react and then thinking that's not how I look, that's not how I feel, that's not how I want to act or react to certain situations. And just this trapped project was a way for me to be able to kind of break down some of those stereotypes and show how I am and what I feel. The photo shooting process was something completely new to me and Elaha is an amazing photographer and she made me feel so comfortable the entire time. As someone who doesn't always like how she looks in pictures and always picks out her flaws, the way that the pictures came out and just the entire process, it was amazing and I just felt so comfortable and confident and beautiful in those pictures, even though that's not how I always feel. The final photo shoot was definitely my favorite. Seeing this beautiful group of women of all different backgrounds and ages and cultures coming together as the culmination of this Trapped project and just seeing what Trapped meant to them and hearing their stories and their backgrounds and sharing my story. It was just so empowering and amazing and I am extremely grateful to have been a part of this project and it really does mean a lot to a lot of people. And now today, I am so proud to present you the Trapped Exhibition, a project that would have not been possible without every single person supporting me and pushing me, motivating me to move forward. It was an honor to work with all these amazing people who worked on this project with me and to create a project that will hopefully give some people courage to speak up and be who they want to be and do what their heart desires. And now the moment we have all been waiting for, or at least I have, is finally here. I would like to welcome you to the exhibition of Trapped. The first thing you will see as you walk into the ex exhibition is the photo 
of a person in their most vulnerable position, surrounded by light where there is nothing but darkness in the outside. I see this photo as a great opener for what you're about to experience as you walk through the exhibition. Then if you scroll down, you will find a description of the project and what you're about to experience and how you can experience this exhibition. If you scroll down more, you can then find the name, a photo and a bio of different uh, participants. You can scroll into the to see what different parts who different participants are where they're coming from what their story is how they felt um, related to this project and you can then see their experience by clicking on this button if you scroll down more you can then find a video of me telling you about how this project is started and a series of the group photo shoots um, and the list of the names of all the peoples who contributed to this project. And then there's a navigator that can help you navigate through different walls of the exhibition. Now let's go and see Alexa's experience. When you enter the participants wall, you can see all of their photos by clicking right and left um, into this slider. You can then scroll down and see their walls where you can find their bio and all of their photos next to each other. Some photos have reflections which are in the form of poetry or a short essay um, next to the photos. These reflections are um, written by other artists. You can also click on the photos and see them isolated. Once you've enjoyed that participant's wall, you can then navigate to see the next participants. Please make sure you visit all the different walls and see where all these amazing people are coming from, what is their story, and how they relate to Travel Project. At any time, if you want to go back to the exhibition main page, you can just click here and that would take you to the opening page or as I would like to call it, the opening wall. In the end, I want to thank all of you for joining me today for this opening. I also want to thank everyone who participated in this project one way or another. I want to thank Gully for designing the exhibition and also my amazing professors and mentors, Laura and Giselle, for helping me, mentoring me, and guiding me through this journey. Thank you. I want you to like do this exactly. I feel like the irony that you're curious is going to increase. It's up to be something that shouldn't be said out loud. Honestly, I thought that I would be dead by now. Oh, Saba, you look so cute.
Thank you for watching it. Wow, I tried so hard not to cry. <laughs> the behind the scene helped. Um, <laughs> now um, I want to jump and start the Q&A by asking a question from one of the amazing participants who could make it here today. Uh, Dodo, I'm so glad you could make it here today. I have a question for you. I was wondering, <laughs> I was wondering if you could share your experience with Trapped and how your photos made you feel. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was watching in the video where some of the, the other participants shared as well. So I'll try to live up to um, that level <laughs> of uh, insights. Uh, so yeah, thank you for inviting me. This has really been um, a journey, you know, for for you uh, and all the participants. I know for myself, actually, it's a journey that um, you know started very early uh, when I was much younger and trapped very promptly, you know, at the time a couple years ago. Uh, helped me put words to it, put an image to it. Um, and then something that continues after Trapped, I think for, for my own reflection to grow um, after that. So, you know, I'm very happy to uh, see you again and also share that with uh, everyone here. Um, so first of all, I guess the experience itself, I would say it was very fun um, and reflective. Uh, fun being that, you know, from the video, I think everybody saw that it was a very collaborative process. Um, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was the model, you know, doing whatever Elahe wanted me to do. Like that was sort of, you know, it, like not the point of the project, right? So I think you, Elahe, very intentionally wanted it to be a thought partnership and kind of play around with it, right? Like um, it's, it's a true collaboration. So um, I love that we, you know, we're just experimenting, like the idea of kind of half makeup, you know, was sort of when we were talking <laughs> at some point, um, I don't even know, I don't even remember who, who uh, popped up the idea, but you know, we went with it and it went, uh, turned out really well. So yeah, so the whole experience itself, I think had a lot of fun to it. Um, but of course, at the same time, I think uh, because of your outreach, right, it helped me really uh, start to reflect on this feeling that I've had for a really long time. Um, and personally, you know, I, I also, I was a girl in tech uh, or math very, very early on, uh, went through this whole competitive math track, came from China, you know, uh, to US for high school and then MIT. And, you know, on top of all that, I also reflected myself to be an artist at heart who's studying engineering <laughs> at MIT, uh, who has an interest in business, um, who, you know, like growing up in a society where I had a lot of expectations of women, uh, you know, not necessarily in tech uh, or math or art uh, for that matter. Um, so I think, yeah, the you know, I, I felt like through the project, uh, I was able to really see it, you know, through the power of art, like in, in one, two, three images, right? And a couple short blurbs, um, what this conflict has been about. Um, and, you know, I think we coined it that it was this struggle between the outside expectations um, and my own way of looking at myself. Um, the multiple, multi multiple identities that could exist in the same person, but we live in a world of specialization. You know, we live in the world of putting a single label on people. Um, but in fact, I felt like I'm much more than um, a single label. I'm much more than a specialized, you know, career. I'm much more than like any part of me. Um, so thank you for, you know, jumpstarting that reflection. I would say that reflection actually since college has really um, in the past two, three years since I started working. So I, I worked for about three years at a global con top consulting firm. I just uh, recently decided to 
changed my career into you know k-12 education also professional coaching um and i think actually this whole reflection of uh who i really am right who i can be um all the different parts of me uh, really led me here right um i think just even in in my previous career as a consultant um i was continuing to reflect on how you know, this outside expectation of what you should, you know, behave, what you should look, uh, you know, the your job kind of your job title becomes your only identity, right? <laughs> um, and I was actually very happy that um, that I could bring this kind of discussion to my colleagues, to my teams, you know, uh, to the company itself. We actually had a discussion around kind of multiple identity, right? How people uh, see themselves versus what what they think the job ex like requires them, <laughs> right? To, uh, to be perceived. And so, yeah, so these discussions continue. And I think if I were to sum it up of how I look at this picture of me and of, uh, of your wall, you know, home wall picture as well, um, I would say that it reminds me of a quote that I saw somewhere um, is, you know, the darkness that we experience is not the darkness of the tomb, but rather the darkness of the womb. You know, like we are to be born, we're to be awakened. Uh, we are, the fact that we are doing this project, experiencing these struggles and conflicts and emotions um, is the start of something new and it's the start of, you know, uh, the liberation of uh, all of us. And um, so now I look at these pictures, I feel extremely hopeful. And, you know, so I think <laughs> for me, it, it has been, yeah, like the, the past uh, three years and the journey uh, didn't start with the project. It was very well captured with the project um, and it continued after the project. Thank you so much, Dodo, for sharing that. It was it was amazing to hear. Your... Thank you for inviting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it. Um, now, if um, Sarah, if you want to take over. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it's time that we can invite everyone into the conversation. You're welcome to speak up or to put a question into the chat. We welcome either one and we love to see videos on for friends and family. So Alahi can see you. Anyone who's got a question. Can you hear me? Yes, thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Mustafa. And uh, so I have a question for Alahi or I like any, of the, any other of the participants here. Uh, I've been seeing the posters for the exhibition on the social media and I that that's, that's the main reason I joined the exhibition today. And there was, there's a question growing in my mind. And that's the uh, fact that like why the dark theme or the black color is chosen to uh, represent the participants in this uh, exhibition. Like what does exactly this color means and what emotion this color is going to express there? So I told everybody to wear whatever they were comfortable with. So whatever it's them, like, for example, if um, I'm a person that I usually wear dresses and that's what I'm comfortable in, then I wanted the person to wear the dress. Or if they're like usually comfortable walking around with jerseys and that's what I wanted them to show up with. And and I think like in the final photo shoot, you can see that like contrast of what are, what different women are comfortable wearing and like feel like that's that's their them. That's what they are. Oh, okay. They are, sorry. Thank you very much. That was a great exhibition. Yeah, of course. Thank you for joining. I have a question about your contribution in arts in your life at MIT. Were you surprised by what a uh, prominence this kind of practice took in your life as a student? Was that something you expected or was that a discovery for you? It was not something that I expected. It, when I found, so uh, growing up, I knew I loved photography. I would always like take a photo with my phone or like steal my mom's camera and uh, take photos with that. Um, so I knew I like it, but I 
realize how powerful it can be in my photography class. Again, thanks to my amazing professors who opened my eyes to like the power of arts. And, um, and that was then that I realized the issues that I care about, um, I probably can contribute use, doing robotics and the engineering that I'm studying and I'm doing, but I realized there's like something more pow powerful with just like a photo that you can show it to different people. Everybody would take something different from it. And it's just so powerful because there's like no right or wrong, no this or that. It's, this is what I'm showing you. I put a lot of emotions in it. Now, what do you take out of it? And, um, and I think that was something that in photography and the visual arts that I started practicing, I saw a lot more than I ever saw in my engineering classes or research. It's a good answer, thanks. Thank you, <laughs> it's yes. really interesting, yeah. And since I'm here to moderate, I wanna welcome anyone else to ask a question. You can also ask of one of, you know, if anyone who participated wants to speak up, we'd love to hear from you. Um, thank you, Elahe, for, uh, for your invitation to the opening. Um, it's very brave of you to express yourself so publicly. Um, my question for you is that you said that you were, when you started it, it was a personal project. And then you realized that other people were also struggling with issues and you started to um, invite them to also join this uh, and feel this experience with you. Um, so my question is that what made you feel that the project was done? Because it can go on forever. And yeah. What made you stop and decide that, okay, it's time to wrap it up? Uh, that's a good question. I think it was a very hard call to make. Um, I think one thing that I realized um, in, in 2020, before I actually make the call of having the final photo shoot, was that I, my goal was to have a space for everybody to feel safe. And I felt like my project maybe is also creating some sort of um, gender uh, exclusiveness that I'm just making it for women to feel, to like show the struggles of women and show the struggles of female in the society. And, and I realized I want it to be more than that. Even though yes, there, like women have had a lot of struggles the, in the history, we can just go and see how much like bias has affected all of us. Um, but in the society that we're living now, we know that the gender is not binary anymore. We have like non-binary identification and those people are also having struggles of their own. And it's just like a wide range of people and just people having struggles. Uh, and I wanted my next project to be more about that, creating a safer space for everybody, creating um, something that everybody can contribute to and have other audiences to see that and be like, okay, we need to be more cautious or like conscious of all of these issues and we need to speak up about all of these issues. Um, okay. Thank you. And yeah. um, do you have anything in your mind that you'd be proceeding with your next project, the future project? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. That's my answer. <laughs> Fair enough. I actually have the same question. I was going to ask her, what are you going to do with your time now, now that this project you know, has its showcase and it's over? Yeah, I know. It's, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of that. And once I have a lot of sleep, I'll think about something else to do. <laughs> do you think that this project will extend into your professional life in any way? Any of the lessons that you've learned would go into your professional work? I mean, obviously you're finishing your degree still. And Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. I think this project gave me a lot of courage to just talk to people as people 
because um, I think sometimes it's just hard to see other people as somebody else who's also struggling and dealing with everything that you are also dealing with. And just like, I think doing this project, I would just like start, go to people and start talking to them and be like, yeah, th there is this project that I'm working on. And it would just open up the conversation and help me to like get to know people and like connect to more people. And, and I think that was like a practice for me too, to just like learn how to talk to people because as an, or somebody who moved from Iran to US and as somebody who's like English is my second language, it was a challenge for me to just like talk to people when I first moved to US and make friends and network or just like in a party, talk to people. Um, and I think this project gave me a really good medium and practice and um, I'm grateful. <laughs> Dodo has a question. Yeah, I, uh, so I guess on a related topic, uh, how do you see art, you know, maybe photography obviously is a big part of it or maybe other art forms kind of play into, you know, your life uh, or a professional, whether a professional life or, you know, from this point on, what is the role of continuing kind of to be an artist, mm -hmm. right? Um, what does that mean to you? What's your plan around that? That's a, that's a really great question to you. Um, these are actually things that I'm actively thinking about, like, what am I going to do next? How is this going to merge with my engineering life? And I think the honest answer is that I still don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I think some ideas that I have now is that I really enjoy talking to different people, bringing different people from different backgrounds together and having them like connect and have something amazing come out of it. And, and I think I wanna use that to bring people together. Um, whether it's gonna be like an engineering project, an art project or something completely different, but I want to bring people together because I, when I talk to people individually, I can see how amazing they are. And sometimes I can see how they're not confident and they don't see how amazing they are. And I want to be like, if I can, I want to be able to tell them that you're amazing. Like, and then tell somebody else who I know it's amazing. Be like, you two are awesome. Meet each other, make something amazing. And I think I could do a little bit of that in trap and I want to do more of that. Very cool. Yeah, can, I, can, I can relate. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, yeah, the power of art uh, in that case is very strong. Yeah, thank you for asking me. I'd say the world needs you. <laughs> <laughs> needs more of that. Um, anyone else? Hi, Elahe. This is really great. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, these pictures with us. Um, and also thanks for inviting. Um, I have one more question for you. I wanted to ask uh, for people wondering or people debating uh, considering like incorporating arts into um, their other like non-arts uh, professional lives or other things, what advice would you have uh, for these people uh, wanting to pursue arts in addition to anything else that you do, uh, given that you have been able to do it very successfully? Thank you for saying that. Um, I think what I tell myself is that if there is something that, you want to do do it like if you want to take a day out of your crazy schedule and just go out and take photos just do it and uh, we all need need a time like need a break we all need a way to express everything that's like building up and I feel like with our lives now it's like everything happening back to back and like you don't have a time to process anything. You don't have a time to like sit back and see what is happening. And mm -hmm. I think art for most of us is a way to take out all of the things that have been like piling up in our bodies and in our mind and like just get it out. And we need that. Like you need that as a way to like stay sane and be able to like um, operate in your crazy life. So 
if you have something that makes you happy, do it. Even if you think it's going to take up from your life and like keep you from doing your PSATs or research or whatever, it's not because it's going to help you take everything that's in your mind out. And then you can focus on the other parts more too, like, because you will have a clear mind and that will help you like 100%. If it didn't come fight me, I will, <laughs> I will be responsible. But. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you for asking me. I want to probably add something. Um, if if you have time, go model for Allah. It helps your self confidence. <laughs> yeah, it 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 really does. Like for, I am really uncomfortable in photos. I am really uncomfortable, and uh, just like Allah, just like taking two, three random or casual pictures of me. I, I I felt the confidence boost. Yeah, she's. She's great. She, you can't separate her from this project. She's a very big part of this idea. Like I, I it's it's not easy as a I, I, I don't at least I don't think I'm not a photographer, but I don't think it's easy as a photographer to make someone comfortable that you're taking photos of. And Eloha is so good at that. She's so good at that. Yeah. So thank you for your amazing music too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> For those who didn't know, the music in the movie and in the opening was composed by Arya. Um, and it was amazing. Composed, yeah. It, it was, it, <laughs> yeah. It was some random improvises. Late and nights. Golbahar is also here, right? Yeah. Uh, Golbahar was the designer of the exhibition, What You're About to See. And Thank you so much for making it happen. I tried to like change one or two things and I was going crazy. <laughs> so thank you so much for making it happen. Of course. Thank you for all the beautiful art. I had such a good time making it to the point where I'm probably going to be making more artist websites. That was amazing. <laughs> thank you. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> So we've got some really lively and inspiring conversation happening. I want to encourage that to keep going on, but I'm also being sensitive to the hour. So um, I think we're going to wrap up the official event and we're going to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much to Alahe for this fantastic showing of Trapped. Um, on that subject, we'd like to encourage everybody in here to visit the Wiesner Gallery site and to explore this exhibition and others at your leisure. And um, basically, I think at this point, we can move into the after hours segment. So if you are friends, family, peers, colleagues, anybody, and you want to stick around and chat with Alahe and with each other, we're going to keep this room open. Feel free to unmute yourselves and let the party continue. Thank you all for coming today. We really yes, thank you all it. so much. Have an awesome evening. Thank you. I also want to thank everybody who joined me and joined us today. I really hope you enjoyed the exhibition. And um, if you have time, let's stick around and talk, <laughs> share stories. <laughs>